yourself. Yes. I'm encouraged today. Hallelujah. I am encouraged. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We thank God for all of you joining us today. We thank all of you that's joining us by the airways. Praise God. All of you that's in church now, y'all go ahead and open up your phones. I know how we do it. I'm looking at the Bible. Go ahead and share it at with us Amen. right now. Go ahead and hit that share button. Praise God. If you yes. can see us online, give us a wave, give us a thumbs up, give us them praying hands. Let us know that you're out there. Amen. 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 We thank God for you. I know you heard that song. I'm encouraged. I am encouraged. Don't you know? That came from David. You know, you got to encourage yourself. Yeah. Too many of us, we looking oh, for somebody yeah. else to do it. But I'm telling you right now, you got to learn how to encourage thank yourself. You, Jesus. Yes. Glory to God. I learned how to encourage myself. I got to go and build myself up. I bought myself an award one time. Hey, man, I bought myself an award. I said, glory to God. Yes. Look at this. Thank you. It's supposed to see my face. It won't open up. Oh, but I'm encouraged, God. though. I'm encouraged. <laughs> <laughs> I am encouraged, Amen. glory to God. I love it. I know that that song was on point, y'all. I'm mm -hmm. encouraged. Yes. You know, because this morning when I got up, God gave me the first description of Psalms 118, 24, man. I get up, I read that word, man, because I want to get built up. And the word wow. of the Lord said, this is the this day is. that the Lord has made. Hallelujah. I will rejoice uh -huh. and be glad yes. in it. Yes. Look what the psalmist is saying. He says, I will. I no matter what's going on, no matter what I'm facing, I will. I will. He said, I will rejoice yes. and be glad in it. Song just said, I'm going to encourage yes. myself. Yes. He said, I'm going, I will be glad. And then he didn't say, I'm going to rejoice. Many people quote it wrong. You look at it in your Bible. I looked it up in a couple different verses. He said, and we will. We will. He said, and we will. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. He said, this is the day that the Lord has been. Uh -huh. But he said, we will. Yes. He, he did like a, a Joshua. He said, and for me and my house, yes. we will. My God, Lord rejoice God. and be glad in it. Yes. We will rejoice yes. and be glad in it. Yes. When I was reading that this morning, I got so excited in my soul, it took me to Psalms 34 and 3, and it mm. said, oh, magnify the Lord with me. Yes. Let us, re oh my God, let us exalt his name together. Yes. See, see, the psalmist didn't want to do it by himself. That's the reason why he said, this is the day that the Lord has made, and we will. Come on, Pastor. <laughs> He could have went out there by himself. You know, David praised him until his clothes fell off. Yes. But then he said, we will rejoice. Come on. Yes. No, he wanted y'all to get in on this thing, too. Yes. And being the Christian house of praise, we need to be a we will rejoice. We yes. need to come together, all of us, and magnify his name yes. together. Yes. Let us exalt his name together. together. Glory to God. He's high and lifted up. Yes. I'm telling you, man, if you get past your problems, if you get past the mm. issues and the situations, man, if you can just push past yes. those things, man, and start to magnify God, Jesus. start to lift up God, I'm yes. telling you, your problem, you'll take your problems, your issues, and your situations to a level they cannot even survive. Yes. See, you got what the problem, the problem ain't the problem. The problem is you won't let the problem get introduced to your God. Amen. Mm. So you keep on, you keep on dealing with the problem, and therefore you remain on the level where the problem is. But if you would take your problem to another level where your God is, guess what? Your problem won't be able to survive up there. <clears throat> you will take your problem to an altitude that it won't be able to survive upon. And too many of us, because we won't magnify his name. We won't say, we, he, we already know this is the day that he made. Guess what he made yesterday, the day before that too, the day, the day tomorrow, he's going to make tomorrow, the next day. But will you rejoice oh, and be glad in it? Yes, That's the I question. Will, will, will you rejoice and be glad in it? Glory to God. I will rejoice. I, I will rejoice. What he's really saying, he says, no matter what the distraction is, no matter what the delay is, I'm making a declaration that I will. will. I will. And you better yeah. get a I will down in your spirit. Yeah. You better get a I will in your spirit. No, I will. Mm. Glory to God. I'm going to do yeah. it. I will do it. Glory to God. And when you get an I will down in your spirit and you start to magnify and exalt yes. the name of God, man, you take things to a whole nother level. Oh, man. I'm, I'm seeing it. I'm watching what God is doing because we're taking because we taking Him up. He said because you taking me up because you magnifying me. Your problems got to fall off. They got to fall to the wayside. Glory to God. 
I will rejoice. I will rejoice. I will magnify. He said, oh, let us. Come on here. Let us. Glory to God. Let us do it together. Amen. I'm so glad, so excited, and delighted to be yes. here, y'all. The church is moving. The church is doing so many things. The church is growing. The church is expanding. The church is a living organism. And I yes. thank God that the church, nor our God, is dead. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. I thank God that, thank that God is not dead, and yes. neither is our church. Amen. 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 I have been in some dry land. Yes. Y'all yes. so yes. don't know. I been in some dry yes. place. Glory to God. That's why I told you this morning. The clock's back. The clocks go forward. The clocks go back. It don't matter what the clock do. I think, I'm thankful and grateful for the one that gave me the time. Amen. <laughs> you talking about the clock. I'm thankful for the one who gave me the time. Glory to God. So I will rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you, Lord. God has been so good to us, y'all. I want to talk to you today. We're going to the book of Exodus. The 14th chapter. And I'm just going to read one verse in your hearing. Familiar story. Um, piggybacking, if you would. And I'm probably, <clears throat> God has me in his vein, so I may preach it a couple times this month. But God wants us to keep it moving. Keep it moving. God wants us Hallelujah. to keep it moving. God is saying, keep it moving. I don't care what's going on. That's the reason why I say, I will rejoice. What God is saying, I don't care what your problem is. I don't care what the issue is. Keep it moving. Go ahead right now. Look at your neighbor. Look at somebody around you and tell them, keep it moving. Keep it moving. Go ahead tell them, keep it moving. Keep it moving. Keep it moving. It's customary in this house, we stand for the reading of the word. When you get to... Exodus, the 14th chapter and the 15th verse, Exodus 14, 15, you'll find these words here today. It says, the Lord said to Moses, man, whenever the Lord started talking, man, it's like he up us. People ought to listen. Yes. The Lord said to Moses, why do you cry to me? Yes. Tell the sons of Israel to move forward toward the sea. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, as we come before that throne of grace, Father, we give you mercy, Father God. We give you praise, we give you glory, and we give you honor, Father. We thank you for your mercy, Father God, that's everlasting to everlasting, Father. We thank you for the grace that you've bestowed upon us, Father God. We thank you, Father, that we walk high and, and sit in high places, Father God, that we magnify and lift you up, Father God. As we do, we go up, Father God. And we thank you today for your word, Father God. Just like you told Moses and the children of Israel, we too must move forward. Amen. We too must keep it moving. And Father, we thank you for this day and every day. Thank we you. shall rejoice and be glad in it. Father, it's in your son Jesus' name that we pray. And the people of God said, amen, amen. and amen. amen. Go ahead and give somebody an air five and tell them it's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you. We're in the COVID season. Yeah. Now. We got to give them an air five. We got to give them an old bump. You know, we got to let them know. I'm telling you, sometimes we act like things that are going on in the world because they said this, because they said that. They What they are really trying to do is get a reaction out of you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what the devil do sometimes. The devil wants you to respond. So the devil will throw something out there, and then when you respond to it, he got what he wanted. That's, that's how antagonists do. Don't you know how antagonists do that? They keep on trying to say stuff to see if they can get a spark out of you. See if they can get your, your temperature rised up. You know what I'm saying? Something that, so they can push you to do something. Say something. Act out of order. Unseemly. But what we got to do as the people of God, we got to stop letting everything move us. <laughs> when people are scattering and running around doing this and doing that, if you are a child of God, what you got to do is put on the brakes, stop moving for a minute, and let them do what they do. Because the God, Moses tells the people, he says, stand still yeah. and see the salvation of your God. Uh -huh. <laughs> God buddy. See, we ain't got to panic because everybody else panicking. I was in California a couple weeks ago. Gas is $5, $6 a gallon. I don't know. Mm -hmm. And I've seen a lot of people at the gas station. <laughs> Put it right on in there. Why? Because they're going to ride. But here, and here where we're at, it's a little bit lower, but it's still high. But somebody said, here, you know it's going up. It don't matter if you go buy all the gas that you can buy, or if you got somewhere to store it. It don't matter if you go get it. It's going to run out something. <laughs> It's eventually going to run out. I don't care how much bread you took home when they said go get the bread. Eventually, it's going to run out and it's going to go back. Yeah. The, 
people of God, you don't have to panic every time they say, he say. You know, they told us to, and we was talking about even on yesterday, get your Christmas presents now. If you don't get them now, you are not going to be able to get them. The kids going to be sad. Ooh, ooh, Lord. Now, you got some people not going to get in debt early. My God. <laughs> I got to get it. They say Johnny's not going to have his toy if I don't go get it now. Man, they got a whole bunch of toys for Johnny. And guess what? If you teach Johnny right, even if he may not get that toy, if he wait, he might get a better toy at a cheaper price. Okay, you man. You better wake up somebody. <laughs> you better wake up. Don't, you don't have to jump every time the world say jump. You don't have to move every time the world say move. You don't have to, We, as people of God, we don't panic every time the world panics. Amen. People talking about when, 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 when we had the last president there. Oh, hold up. Oh, hold up. Oh, you see what he did today? You see what he did? That's what the devil wants you to do. <laughs> he was loving it. He said, bad press is just as good as any other press. <laughs> And we were just out, just, just in a panic. Everything he did. Don't you know God was in control even though he was the president? Yes, right. And just like the one we got in there now, don't you know God's still in control? Yes, he is. <laughs> yes, he is. Right. You know it. Now y'all ain't happy with him. Yes, you know <laughs> when he get <getting> out? <laughs> Glory to God. We don't have to be moved by everything. We don't have to be moved by everything. Look here at Exodus 4, uh, 14 and 15. The Lord said, Stop crying. Yes. That's what he told me. Am I your wife? Stop crying. Cry, baby. My God, stop crying. Some of us think we're praying, but we ain't doing nothing but crying. Stop Here he come again. Here he come again. We come God. Oh, no. Oh, did you hear what they said? Oh, my God. God said, stop crying. Suck it up. Mm. And move forward. Yes. Keep it moving. There's some things in life, man, when they come to you with that stuff, you know, now they say this in the world now, but it comes from the Bible. But they have flipped it. Keep it moving. You know, when people come to you with something, they got you bent, twisted, and they think that's all about you, the devil trying to get you out of your place. You know what you got to tell them? Keep that moving. Mm -hmm. You keep that moving. That's it. See, the problem is what we do, we, we let it stop. Huh? What'd you say? Now we marinating in it. Now, I know they didn't say that to me. I know they didn't that. Now you at home thinking about it, they at home sleeping. Because they just threw it out there to get you riled up. You got to tell them, keep it moving. And now you running to God, crying about something, and God is saying, what you got to do is keep it moving. That's right. We let so much stuff stagnate us and stop us. I can't. God said, I know you can't, but I can. And when are you going to put your faith and your trust in me? He said, the reason why you can't is because you trying to. He said, if you would stop doing it and let me do it, mm, then your cake would turn, well, then your cake would turn into I can. Right. He said, what's impossible with man is possible with God. Oh, yes, yes. He said, if everything you can't do, I can do. But too many of us are relying on our own self, our own resources, and our own abilities. That's the reason why I gave you the scripture this morning. God will never ask you to do what's above your ability. God said, I made you able to do that. And some of us are shortchanging ourselves because we don't have enough faith to trust God to do what he didn't gave us the ability to do. Amen. God said, you're able to go back to school. You're able to open that business. You're able, you're able to buy another house. You're able to do this. You're able to do that. But you won't do it because you're trying to do it in your own ability. Instead of trusting God. Right here, the Lord says to Moses, why are you crying? Here you come crying again. Tell them people to move forward. Look, it's one translation. If you read this verse of scripture and another translation, you know what it says? Stop praying. Mm. Ooh, ooh, it's cold, God. God. God is cold. He says, stop praying. Get up. Because some of us, the only thing we, we love, hold on, hold on. You hear what they said? Hold on. Look who in that white house. Hold on. This problem. Hold on. Gas in with them. Hold on. I ain't got it. Hold on. I need this. Stop. And move forward. I said, keep it moving, man. Keep it moving. Yeah. Let me explain to you how we got to the point where we're at, where God is telling Moses to keep it moving. I got to let you know how the children of Israel got to this point. Many of y'all know the story. We're in here in the book of Exodus. God has given Moses an assignment. Mm -hmm. And the assignment that God gave Moses is just like the assignment he'll give you if you open your ears and open your heart and listen to what he's saying. 
He told Moses, he said, go and tell Pharaoh to let my people go. My people that he got enslaved, go tell him to let them go. But this is the caveat God gave Moses. He said, now, when you go tell him, I'm going to harden his heart. You mean you tell me do it ain't going to work? He ain't going to listen to me? I won't. What? Why are you telling me to do it? So what Moses does, <laughs> Moses gives God every possible excuse there is to why he cannot do what God is telling him to do. That's right. Mm -hmm. Oh, come on, man. He started telling God, I can't, I can't complete that mission. Go back to Exodus, the third chapter. Now, we're in the, we're in the 15th chapter, 14th chapter. But you go back to Exodus, the third chapter. This is where the excuses start. You know, many of us, we got excuses. God done told you to do something. It's more folks now got excuses why they can't. COVID, COVID helped a lot of folks out with their life. Mm -hmm. I can't come to church. COVID. Hey, hey, I would come with COVID. I watch online. <laughs> but I can't come because it's COVID. I put y'all see that post I put out, y'all say, you go here, there, here, there, there. But you can't come here. <laughs> Glory to God. Why? Because you got an excuse why you can't come to church. This is probably the most protected place in the world to be. All right. The Bible says in the shadow of the Almighty. Yeah. Glory to God. That's where you want to be. Chapter 3, God is speaking to Moses out of the burning bush. Y'all know the story. Remember, we learned that in Sunday school. God is speaking out of this burning bush. But the bush is not being consumed. And he's talking to Moses and he's telling Moses the assignment that I want you to go on, Moses. This is what I want you to do, Moses. Moses, now, I don't know about y'all, but if I seen a voice coming out of a burning bush, I'm following that voice. My God, I got to do what you see. And the, and the bush ain't burned up. Ain't that enough proof for you that God is bad? God is real? But not for Moses. Moses, like many of us, because he was putting his faith in himself, he started giving God excuses. Yes, he did. Yeah. Verse 11. Exodus 3 and 11. Here go Moses. Who I'm supposed to tell him sent me. Mm. <laughs> Moses asked God, who I'm supposed to tell him sent me. That's right. God said, okay. Okay, you, you, don't, want, you don't know. Tell him I am yeah. sent you. Now, Moses didn't like that because many of us, would he, he going to be mad if I say I. Who? I am who? What do you mean? Do y'all remember uh, the mantra I came up with in 2020? Mm -hmm. There's a lot going on for us. There was a lot going on for us. And God gave me, it's above me. Mm -hmm. The I, the A, and the M. I Come am. <laughs> you, better, you better get Come it, man. Yeah. Hey, last year, see, we didn't go with our bishop's mantra. <clears throat> we, didn't, we didn't go with our mother's church's mantra. Why? Because God spoke directly to me and said, this is the word for the Christian house of prayer. Yes. It's above me. It's above me. And then and when you go, it, it's above me, it's I am. I am. Because I am is above you. <laughs> I am is above it. I am is above the problems, the issues, and the situations. Yes. I am. And then he reassures Moses. If you keep reading in that third chapter, he reassures Moses. He said, go tell him I am sent you. And I want you to know, Moses, when you go to tell him, um, I am is going to be with you. Yeah. <laughs> he said, I am is going to be with you. Yes. Many of us don't know, man, when you go on your job, don't you know God just showed up? I don't care how many folks up in there, I don't care how many unsaved people on that job. When you get there, God just showed up. Why? Because God is with you. Amen. He's with you. Everywhere you go, he's with you. He said, Moses, when you go, tell him I am sent you. And he said, son, I'm going to be right there with you. <laughs> he reassures Moses. Well, Moses said, okay, I got that. I got that. Okay, he tell him I am sent you. If you go down to Exodus 3 and 13, then Moses says, what's your name, God? Mm. I told you I am. I told you to tell him I am. Mm -hmm. Tell him I am sent you. Then the very next thing God tells Moses to do, go gather the leaders. Mm -hmm. Do you see that? Am I in your Bible? I'm in yeah. Exodus mm -hmm. the third chapter. Mm -hmm. He said, yeah. go gather the leaders. That's what we did on yesterday. See, before you can start putting out uh, uh, things to the people, what you got to do first, Moses, he said, now I gave you, remember I told you, the uh, divine authority is God. Ooh, I'm working this thing. Divine authority. God spoke to Moses and told Moses, this is the assignment. 
Then he tells Moses, go gather the leaders. Do you see it? Mm -hmm. Because now, because you have direct authority, God spoke to Moses directly, gave Moses direct authority, just like God gave me direct authority. Then in 2020, it's above me will be the mantra for the Christian house of praise. He said, now go gather the leaders. Mm -hmm. Pull in the leaders together now. Why? Because God does everything that he does, decent and in order. Go gather the leaders. First thing you do after you get direction from God, you just don't start running off unless God told you to go. You go get the leaders together. Why? Because God wants to assemble us. Yeah. <laughs> he always starts with the leader first. I'm telling you, man, God is powerful. He always starts with the leader first. Now, when you slide over to Exodus, the fourth chapter, the first verse, Moses is still doubting himself. He's doubting himself. He says, look at it in your Bible. What if he won't listen to me? <laughs> Do you see it? Now God didn't told you. He's speaking to you out of a burning bush. He didn't give you direction and an assignment to do. You know how God speaks to me, y'all? He speaks to me in dreams, man. I have to get up sometimes. I'll be telling my wife, man, I can drink this. I can't put this piece together. I can't put that piece together. God be speaking to me in dreams. And then when I open that book up, God would take me right to the verse of scripture where he was talking to me in the dream and give me the directions right out of his word. That's how he speaks to me, y'all. All right. Moses is getting the word right out of a burning bush. It's talking to him, y'all. He's sitting up here talking about, who should I tell him sent me? He said, tell him I am sent you. Then Moses, in verse 4 of Exodus, in verse 1 of Exodus, the fourth chapter, Moses said, what if he won't listen? <laughs> Sometimes that's when God give us an assignment. We go through, what if this happened? What if that happened? Yeah, what if yeah, this happened? Yeah. God said, keep it moving. Stop coming up with excuses. Stop telling me why you can't do what I'm commanding you to do. Keep it moving. He said, what if he won't listen? And to further assure Moses, this is what God does. He said, Moses, what do you have? And like many of us, yeah. I ain't got nothing. Mm -hmm. That's the fuck. We quit. I ain't got nothing. God said, I gave you everything you need. Romans 12 and 3. I dealt every man and every woman a measure. He said, I know you got it. He asked Moses, what do you have, Moses? I ain't got nothing. He said, what's in God got to remind me. What's in your hand, Moses? What's in your hand? This stick, it ain't nothing. Let's go ride a stick. He said, throw it down. And this is what we got to understand. If you would throw down what you got. Come on, yeah. You know, whatever you got, if you would throw it down. He said, throw it down, Moses. And Moses throws the stick down, and the stick turns into a snake. Yeah. Oh, good God of money. He didn't know, he didn't know what he was carrying. <laughs> Some of us don't know what we're carrying. God. When God is in oh. you, you got to know what you're carrying. You have the anointing, you have the very precious blood of Jesus Christ running through your back. You don't know what you're carrying. He said, throw it down. See, the problem is with us, we won't throw it down. Mm -hmm. My God. We won't lay it down. Uh. Moses throws the rod down, and the rod becomes a snake. Many of us have ran, many of us have been, we'd have been in the next step. Ah, right. A snake, I've been carrying that. He said, reach out your hand and pick it up. And when he picks the stick back up, when he picks the rod back up, the rod turns back into a rod. Mm -hmm. He said, my God. Now he's speaking out of a bush to Moses. Come on, come on somebody. He just showed you that your rod can turn into a snake. God mm. of <laughs> Glory to God. But he, he looked, God is looking at Moses' face and he said that Moses is still confounded and confused. God said, stick your hand inside your bosom. Uh-huh. Oh, yes. Moses sticks his hand inside it. He said, now take it out. Moses got leprosy. Leprosy is worse than having COVID-19. Leprosy in those days there, if you had leprosy, you were ostracized. You were ex ex excommunicated yes. from everybody else. You were quarantined until you died. Good God Almighty. He pulled his hand out and he got leprosy. He said, oh, God. God said, put it back in there. Mm -hmm. He puts his hand back in his bosom, and pulls it out again, and no more leprosy. Come on, show you the Woo! God said, now keep it moving. What's your next excuse? What's the reason why you can't do what I'm telling you to do now? I'm speaking to you out of a bush. I just showed you this rock can become a snake. I just showed you I got the power to heal any disease yeah. that you can have. Yeah. Yeah. I say anything that yeah. you can have, I can heal it. Yeah. They didn't have a cure for, for leprosy back then.
back then, but God showed him, mm-hmm. if you can have it, I can heal it. Thank you. Glory to God. He showed Moses. I'm speaking to you out of a bush. I just showed you what this rod can do. I just gave you, woo, good God, but I just gave you healing from on high. Yes. God said, if you can have it, I can heal it. Yes, he can. Yes, he can. God Almighty. Moses said, woo. Thank you, Jesus. All these signs, all these wonders. You just showed me leprosy. You can, you can heal it right there. And I like the pause right here. God was showing Moses that if you can have something, whatever problem can come up in your life, whatever issue you can have, God said, I got the power to heal it. Yes, he does. What God wants you to do and what he wants me to do is keep it moving. Stop stopping. Stop letting every obstacle become a stop sign for you. Mm. What if he won't listen? What if he don't what if he don't listen to me? What if he don't do what I'm telling him to do? God said, keep it moving. I tell you to do it. All you gotta do is do what God says. God shows all these miraculous signs to Moses. He shows Moses in essence. That my power is with you. He said, now, that rod, when I turned it into a snake, I showed you that my power is with you. Yeah, when you put your hand inside of your bosom and you came out with leprosy on it, I showed you that my power is with you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, sh- I just showed you these miraculous signs. I'm speaking to you out of a burning bush that has not been consumed, son. Mm-hmm. I'm showing you all these things here. Yes. Moses. Even with all these signs. You see how many signs God just showed Moses? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Guess what Moses says now in Exodus 4 and 10. You know I don't speak that good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what he said. Man, do you understand? Now you know I don't speak real good. Mm-hmm. You, 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 know, you know I got this stuttering problem. Yeah. God says, son, I knew you. I made you. I formed you in your mama's womb. You, who are you talking to? I know everything about you. And I still chose you. Some of us are looking at our own selves and, and discounting ourselves. God, you know I, I ain't this. I ain't that. I don't have this. I don't have that. God said everything you got is everything you need. All right. right. We sitting up here talking, well, you know, if I had this, if I was able to do that, if I had a little bit more money, God said, you got enough. <laughs> we, we're getting ready to build a church. Not because we got the Thank money in Jesus. the bank, because we got the faith in God. Yes! Yes, yes, yes! Oh, glory to God! Oh, it's easy to say you're going to do something when you already see the money, when you already see the provision, when you already got the land. Oh, you talking real big now. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. But when you don't see it, but you believe it. Yes. Glory yes. to God. Oh, man. He was telling Moses, don't you see, son? I've just shown you. It's not about you, but it's all about all me. About <laughs> God, but yeah. God was trying to show him, son, it's not about you. And Moses was steady flipping the script, just like we be doing. We take it back and start thinking about ourselves. My God. You know I don't speak real good. Mm. You don't send me up there. Nah, 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 nah. He ain't going to listen to me. Mm. You sure I'm the one you want to go up there? I'm going to be, I'm going to be stuttering. Especially now. They got scared now, too. You talking about talk to him? And Pharaoh, oh, no. And you know what? We magnify problems more than we magnify God. Amen. He didn't put, he didn't put Pharaoh on some kind of pedestal like Pharaoh bigger than God. You, you, you know, I mean, we could, could, could go up there. He, he don't listen to me. He bad. You know, Pharaoh bad. That's how some people was when that man was in the White House. Ooh, he bad. Ooh, they got flags. Ooh, they got guns. Guess what? I got one too. Flag and gun. <laughs> but not only that, I serve a God that's greater than any weapon you can form against me. Amen. Yeah. 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 God, man, yeah. any yeah. weapon you can form against me. I Thank serve God. a God that's able to come back. Thank you, Jesus. He said, I'll come against whatever comes against you. Whatever try to take you out, I'll take it out. If your trust is in me. Moses flips the script back on God and started talking about, well, I can't speak very well. What, what you going to do about that? And at this point, if you look in your Bible, Exodus 4 and 14, God got mad now. Don't you think God got a reason to be mad at this point, y'all? Yeah. How many signs and wonders has he shown you, man? Yeah, do you see it? Am I in your Bible? Yeah. At this point, God needs to have enough now. I have showed you too many things. In our lives, God has done too many things in our lives for us to prove to us who he is. Yes. And 
we still running around talking about, what about this? What about that? How about this? What if this happened? And at this very point, God has gotten mad. Yes. Do you see it? Mm -hmm. My Bible says, and the Lord's anger was kindled against Moses. Mm -hmm. yeah. My Lord. Yeah. He has a right to be mad at this point, y'all. Mm -hmm. I went through all this showing you. And you keep coming back to me telling me every excuse, every reason in the book why you can't do what I'm commanding you to do. He was mad at Moses. And I'm going to tell you, this is an example for us. When God is telling you to do something, I'm praying with you and saints. When God is telling you to do something, please don't keep giving them excuses. Please don't keep telling God why you, because what you're getting to, you're moving into the realm of rebellion. Yes, sir. You're moving into the realm of rebellion. Mm -hmm. I'm praying with you now. God gave me this word. I'm telling you, my bishop had preached, preached it. I picked it up because we got to keep it moving. We cannot tell God that I can't do this and I can't do that and I won't do this and I won't do that because we're at the point now of rebellion. And the Bible says in Exodus 4 and 14, the Lord's anger was kindled against Moses. Yes, it was. You ever seen a fire killing? Mm. Ooh, you ever seen a fire? We used to have, we had a fireplace when I grew up. And, and when them, when them cold, when, when that wood got real hot, mm. that wood would pop. Yeah. That fire would get so hot sometimes that, that wood would go pop. That wood would pop. His Anger is kindled against Moses. Moses just don't know what, what happened. Now he's worried about Pharaoh. See, he didn't pump Pharaoh up like Pharaoh so bad. But now he's been run over into rebellion against God. And he just don't know how much danger he is really in. Mm -hmm. See, I'm going to tell you right now. Uh, <laughs> partial obedience is really full disobedience. Come on, yeah. yeah. You can't tell God I did some of it. I did, well, God, I did that. At least I did that. No, partial obedience is full disobedience. Come on, Pastor. And God is mad, man. But the Bible says his mercy Thank you. endures Thank you. forever. Thank you for your mercy. He's God. mad at Moses right now. And if God, if God, woo, if God would have let loose on him, it would be no more Moses. But instead, look what God does. He said, go get Aaron. He going to speak for you. Good God of mine. Good God of mine. So what was God? Oh, my God. Do you see how Moses had given God all these excuses? And do y'all see that every excuse that Moses gave God, God gave Moses a solution? I'm in your Bible now. For every excuse he tried to run up on God with, even until he got to the point, I stuttered. He said, go get your brother. He just don't know. He just don't know how close he was. You are, I, I got three kids. I'm telling you, I love them to death. But sometimes you get to the point where you, you please, please go, go talk to your mama now. You just don't go. Go, go. Now. You just don't. You just don't know where you at. My God. Go on now. Go on. Get, get out of my presence right now. Yes. Go, go, go. Because you just don't know how much danger you're in. Moses just didn't know how far he was pushing God. Mm -hmm. He said, go get your brother Aaron. Go on now. <laughs> go get him now. <laughs> right now. Right now. <laughs> go get him. And Aaron will speak yeah. for you. What God was saying, son, all these excuses you trying to come to me with, yeah. keep it moving. Mm -hmm. God was saying, go on with that. You can keep that moving. And that's what we do. God said, go ahead and apply for that job. Go ahead and start that business. Go ahead and go back to school. Go ahead and go ahead and do this. Go ahead and do that. And you're sitting up giving God every excuse why you can't do it. And God said, keep it moving. Mm. God said, what I want you to do with that excuse, keep it moving. Keep it moving. Many of us, just like Moses, allow our own inabilities and shortcomings to cause us to doubt God. Mm. We allow our own inabilities and our own shortcomings to cause us to doubt God. And we think, I ain't doubting God. I'm just saying what I can do and I know what I can't do. I'm not doubting God. I'm really, I'm really talking about myself. God said, no, you're talking about me. I created you. And I gave you everything that you have. So when you start talking bad about yourself, don't you know you're really talking bad about God? God said, I'm the one who created you. God is telling Moses, 
He said, in Romans 8 and 31, all the things that he didn't show Moses, the Bible says in Romans 8 and, 34 and 31, if God be for us, yeah. if God is for you, you sitting up here talking about what Pharaoh can do and how bad Pharaoh is and how, how big a man he is and how what is he get mad and what if he don't listen and I stutter and all these things. The Bible says in Romans 8 and 31, if God be for us, uh-huh. if God is for me, man, yeah. Yeah. if God be for us, uh-huh. yeah. All this talking, you're talking about how big your problem is. You're talking about how big. Keep it moving. Keep it moving. Keep it moving. There is no failure in God. All right. When God called me to start the ministry, man, he called me to start the church, man. I prayed about it, man. I prayed. I asked God so many times, God, did you sure it's me, God? You, you know, God, you know me. God, you know me. I started talking like Moses, man. I started giving God excuses. Bro. Oh, yes. And I went to my pastor, and my pastor said, I already know if God already told me. Thank you, Jesus. My pastor told me, I said, what if I fail? Mm. My God. I, I told my pastor, yeah. I said, Pastor, tell me, what if I fail? He told me, he said, there is no failure mm. in God. <laughs> God Almighty, man. There is no Thank failure you. in God. Yeah. You can't fail if you're in God. You win if you're in God. The problem is we try to do it independent of God. We over here trying to do it and God said, do it in me. Yes. And watch it succeed. All right. Yes. God Almighty. You're wondering why you failed it. And God said, you're failing because you're not in me. Get in me and you'll have good Good God Almighty. So if God be for us, who would dare try to be against us? us? My God, there is no failure in God. Keep it moving. Yes. yes. So that brings us up from Exodus the fourth chapter, where I just took you to, to now Exodus the fourteenth chapter, the fifteenth verse. Now that He didn't gave God all these excuses, finally. You go and do what God told you to do. Yeah. And we all know the story. He went and told Pharaoh. And Pharaoh, because Pharaoh bold in the hole. Who is God? Oh, Lord. I don't listen to no God. But God had turned. The Bible says the king's heart yes. is in the hand of God. Come on, right. yes. Come on, the yes. king's heart yes. is in the hand of God. God turned Pharaoh's heart. Yes, it is. And Pharaoh yes. let the people go, even though he didn't want to let them. Come on. God can make your enemy be your footstool. Yes. He let the people go, even though he didn't want to let them go. And do you know how they started chasing the children of Israel and Moses? They he came to himself. <laughs> he said, wait a minute. We didn't let them. Because you know they, they let them go. And they didn't just let them go. You read the story in your own time. They let them go. With some provisions. <laughs> Y'all take a look at this with you. They broke them off a little something. Take that one. God will make people bless you that don't even like you. <laughs> All right. All right. God, God turns his heart. He lets the people go. The people are gone. They got some provisions. They on their way. And he comes to himself and said, why we let them go? What was wrong with me? Wasn't nothing wrong with you. God is in control. Yes, he yes. is. Why you sitting up talking about, I can't go in there. My wife would tell you, I went down one time and applied with some folks. I had a briefcase. I walked up in there. I got some clothes on. So I got clean, sharp. I'm broke as a joke. Walking up with that briefcase. Got right in line with me. I said, what you doing here? What you doing here? I'm going to up with y'all. Well, if somebody would have asked me what was in that briefcase, so let me see. One piece of paper. <laughs> I could carry that in my pocket. I walked in there, but it's how you present yourself. Yes, sir. Yes. How you present yourself, especially when you know God is with you. They go and let the people go. Pharaoh said, wait a minute. We didn't mess up. Let's go get them. And do you know, even then, God was in control. Oh, amen. God said, I'm going to make your enemy chase you. Yes. Huh? Yeah, I'm going to make your enemy chase you. The Lord threw the responsibility back on Moses. And he tells Moses, quit praying. Mm-hmm. You know, Mo- Moses now, 
the point that we're at now, Exodus 14 and 15, the children of Israel, they're out there in the wilderness. They're, they're, they're leaving from Pharaoh. They're leaving from, from bondage. They're leaving from captivity. They're on their way. They're, in, they're free. Yes. And they look back in the river. There you go in that river mirror My again. God. They look back in the river mirror. And what do they see? Pharaoh. Pharaoh is hot on their trail. Uh -huh. Pharaoh got his lights on, they blinking, they flashing. Ah! Come on back! That's how the enemy tried to do you. No, when you get delivered God. from something, that very thing, if you look in that room yes, mirror, yes. that very thing is following you. Talking about, come on back! Yes. You know you like it over my here. God. And you start looking, oh my God. Oh, oh my God. God, no. And you're trying to get away from it, but in front of them mm. was the Red Sea. Thank you, Lord. They put on grace. Oh my God. He gained it on us. He gained it on us. And they went to complain to Moses. They went to talk about Moses. Why did you bring us out here? Yeah, yeah. You're going to get us killed. Then, not only did they look in the rearview mirror, they started fantasizing about being enslaved. Jesus. It was better off for us to stay back there and say, Pharaoh was good to us. He was good. These we ate, we had garlic, we had leek. They started naming off their the uh -huh. prison food. God, my. Some of us, we, we, when God gets you out there and you get afraid and, and God is challenging your faith and God is telling you to go forward and do the things that he's required of you to do, you start thinking back to when you was in bondage. It was better for me when I didn't have a car. It was better for me when I was broke. I can't make it out here. They started complaining, crying, complaining. Against Moses. Yes. And what does Moses do? Now, you remember all the excuses he gave God. Now he going to get back on his knees and start questioning God. God said, quit praying. Mm. Get up and keep it moving. Yes. That's what he tells him. Get up. You look in the Living Translation. The Living Translation says, quit praying. Mm. Quit praying. The King James Version says, quit crying. Because sometimes we think we're praying when we really cry. God said, oh, here we come again. Hoo -hoo. Hoo -hoo. Hoo -hoo. You got to cry and complain. God said, quit crying. Quit praying. Get up. And in the living translation, it says, tell the people to get moving forward more. Remember when I read that the living took me back to the army. Yeah. That's what they say. You follow it. Forward. They ain't marching backwards. Forward, Lord. He said, tell the people. See, the, the children of Israel and Moses were in between what we call a rock and a hard place. Mm -hmm. God, here the Red Sea is in front of them, and here their, their past is trying to catch up with them. My God. Here the enemy is. He's hot on their trail. He, they're in between a rock and a hard place, and it would seem like God had abandoned. God you ever been out there and it seemed like God had left you? God didn't gave you direction. He didn't gave you insight. He didn't push you out there. And now all of a sudden, it seemed like he's no longer with you. God. You would yeah. think that God wasn't with them. And just like us, they started complaining. They started whining. They started crying. They got so bad against Moses. Remember, I know that song that she sang was ordained because it goes with this message. You have to encourage mm -hmm. yourself. When David and the men and the mighty men of Israel went out to battle, the Bible said he returned to Ziglag to find their whole city burnt down. They're out doing what God told them to do. They come back, their city is burnt down, their wives and children are taken in captivity. And the first thing the people do, they start talking about stoning the leader. Yeah, yeah. We all killed David. He the one had us out there doing that. No, David had him out there doing what God had told him to tell them to do. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. And they started talking about stoning and David. And the first thing David says, bring me the ephod. The ephod is representation of God. He said, bring me, in yes. other words, the word. Thank you. Yeah. And what David did at that point, he started to encourage himself. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I got to encourage myself. And what Moses should have been doing, instead of crying and complaining to God, he should have been encouraging himself. The one that spoke to you out of that burning wood, the one who turned that staff into a snake, the one who healed that person. You should have been praying and magnifying your God. Not crying and complaining. God had already spoke to you. He already gave you a word. Amen. But sometimes we go back to God after God has showed us everything. 
I remember I, I had a situation break out in our house and we needed $2,000 to fix the thing and all this stuff right here. I didn't have the $2,000, but when it came to I said, fix it. That's bold now. <laughs> That's bold to say fix it and you know you ain't got it. I said, but my God, yeah. Yes, he does. Yeah. Now, I ain't playing. Don't you try, don't, look, don't try this at home. <laughs> you ever see the thing? Don't try this at home. You might not have the faith that I got. I said, fix it. Gotta be fixed, fix it. And when it got fixed, guess what? God made sure I had the provision yes, sir. to cover. Yes, sir. I'm telling you, this is how God works, man. Thank you. Here this brother he is up here. The Red Sea is before him. Pharaoh is on their trail. And it seemed like God has abandoned them. Yeah. They told Moses, we told you, we told you when we was back in slavery, leave us alone. <laughs> leave us alone. But you wouldn't. You kept telling us about this pipe dream. You kept telling us about what God said. You kept telling us that we needed to go forward. So we followed you. And now all of a sudden, we're out here in the middle of nowhere with this Red Sea in front of us. And with the enemy getting ready to kill us. It's funny how we think we praying when we really complain. Mm. Oh, yes. And we wonder why we remain in situations that we're in. We want God to deliver us out of some stuff sometimes. And God said, I'm the one who put you in that situation. <laughs> we blame so much on the devil. Ain't God the one who told them to go out there in the, in the wilderness? Ain't God the one who told Pharaoh to release them? Ain't God the one who told Moses to lead them in the wilderness? God is the one who put them in that situation. And many of us, we go to God telling God, look what the devil done done. Look what we done done. Look how they messed up. God said, no, I put you in that situation. It's not about you. It's all about me. Yeah. This is the reason why Moses tells the people, stand still. So, stand still. Sometimes we move them when we should be standing still. He said, today you will see the salvation of your God. <laughs> Good God Almighty. They, now you know they didn't understand that. We don't see nothing right now but Pharaoh coming and this water in front of us. Oh, he yeah. said, stand still. Stand still. You'll see the salvation, salvation of your God. Lord. See, because the people were afraid, if you look at Exodus 14, 10 through, 10 through 14, the people were afraid. And whenever people get afraid, what they do a lot of times, they get angry. Yeah. You see, see their, their, their fear turns into anger. And then they try to, that's why I, I told y'all before, never make friends with an angry person. Because their anger will turn on you at some point. You about, oh, that's my girlfriend. She kind of mean. She ain't mean with me. Oh, that's my boy. He kind of mean, but he ain't mean with me. Oh, at some point, his anger will turn on you. At some point, her anger will turn on you. Don't ever make friends with an angry person. These people here were fearful, and because of their fear, their fear turned to anger. And that's the reason why they start striking out. If you read it in your own time, Exodus the 14 chapters, verses 10 through 14, they started talking about Moses. And this is the reason why when you get to the 15th verse, Moses gets back down on his knees and start crying out to God. And God says, stop crying, get up, and keep it moving. Exodus 10 says it like this, and when Pharaoh drew, drew near, my God, that means he getting close to him. You know, they got so close to that, that Red Sea, they, ain't, they couldn't go no further. Yeah. What we going to do? Some of us was talking about, let's just go back and tell Pharaoh we're sorry. My <laughs> Lord. Let's just go back. Remember I told you about the cage? A lot of times the cage has never been locked because God, when Jesus gave his life, every cage door had been broken open. Every cage door. The door, the door, the door of drugs is broken open. The door of lack has been broken open. Yeah. The door of slavery has been broken open. Everything that would try to keep or hold the people of God. When Jesus gave his life on the cross, every cage door was open. But the problem with us, we don't know, we don't realize it's open because we let the enemy sell, sell us wolf tickets telling us we better not get out. Mm. So whatever cage we were in, whatever had us trapped, now the enemy is trying to either put us back in it or keep us in it. And many of them, even though that Red Sea was in front of them and Pharaoh was behind them, they started to think in their mind, maybe we should go get back in the cage. Mm -hmm. Maybe we should go back into bondage. Let's just go back and tell them we were sorry and we were ready to serve him again. They went to thinking of all these things. In verse 10, it says, Pharaoh drew near, drew near to the children of Israel. 
And they lifted their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them. I told you he was on their trail. And they were so afraid. Do you see that? The Bible says in verse 10, they were sore afraid. <laughs> not S-O-S. Not S -O -S, not, and I mean, not S-O-O. -O, so afraid. They were sore. It hurt them. They were so afraid. And the children of Israel cried unto the Lord. They started crying unto the Lord. And they said, now they crying to God, but they said to Moses, because there were no graves in Egypt, you have taken us out here to die in the wilderness. Wherefore have you dealt with us like this to carry us forth out of Egypt? Why would you bring us out here? Verse 12 says, is not the word that we did tell you in Egypt? Remember we told you back in Egypt when we said, let us alone. We told you, man, leave us alone. Now, it would seem like they would be more worried about Pharaoh, but they showed his cousin Moses out, ain't they? Yes, they know. They were, they, it, they were, that we may serve the Egyptians. For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians it would have been better for us to be slaves than that we should die out here in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. Some people would rather be a slave than die in God. Amen. Moses in verse 13 said unto the people, fear not. See, he knew they were scared. He said, fear not. You got to be careful being around people that's scary because scary people will make you scary. I ain't glad. Yeah. We used to have to walk by this graveyard going home, man. And I'm going to tell you, man, every time we would get there, me and my cousin walking, he'd take off running. He ain't seen nothing. It scared me to death. I'm, whoa, Lord. Yeah. Now you run. Ain't nothing back there. He was scared. He scared. His fear made you scared. That's right. You got to be careful being around scary people, fearful yeah. people. Moses said unto the people, fear not, but stand still and see, and see the salvation of the Lord. Which you, which he will show you yes. today. Moses said, you're going to see it today. For the Egyptians who you've seen today, the ones that's on your trail right now, you shall see them again no more. And then he throws in ever. <laughs> you know, four is a long time, but it, it becomes real long when you put ever on mm -hmm. For ever. And the Lord shall fight for you. And you shall, oh, this is what you got to do, shut your mouth. Oh, yeah. K-Y-M-S. Stop, stop crying and complaining. Stop worrying about what's going on. He said, and he shall fight for you. Yes, yes, Fear yes. will cause you to miss out on the promises of God. Yes. Fear will cause you to miss out on the promises of God. But faith will cause you to walk in on dry land. <laughs> Glory to God. And you'll possess everything God got for you. When the enemy is behind you and the obstacles are before you, God said, keep it moving. God said, keep it moving. Stop allowing your past to hold you in confinement and the fear to freeze you in time. See, they was frozen in time. They, they, they were frozen. They couldn't move. They, they were trapped. He said, move forward. Not just move forward, but move forward in God and move forward in your faith. Victory don't belong to you. Victory belongs to God. <laughs> Glory to God. Y'all know the story. He said, Moses, raise up that staff. Remember that thing that turned into a snake? Good God Almighty. When Moses raised that staff up, the water receded on both sides. He said, come on now. And who stepped in first? Moses stepped in first. Because you know they were too scared. They said, you don't get in that water standing up like that. They was fearful. Moses stepped out there. And who stepped in behind Moses? The leaders. <laughs> Woo, glory to God. We're standing, y'all. We're standing. Glory to God. Victory belongs to God. I will rejoice. I will rejoice. Yeah. I'm going to keep it, keep it moving. moving. Keep it moving. I don't care what's going on. I don't care what's happening. I'm going to keep it moving. Yeah. You with us today. We're getting ready to partake of communion. <clears throat> but I want you to know we do it a little different here. We take communion at the end of service. Some services, they take it at the beginning. We take it at the end. Here, why? Because we want to give you an opportunity to keep it moving. Yes. Keep it moving in your faith. Keep it moving in God my problems, my issues, my situations. We don't want nothing to block you from being able to receive communion and being able to receive Jesus Christ. He's our Lord and Savior. Some people say, why, why y'all do it at the end? Why? Because I want to make an altar call. I want to give you the opportunity to, to be saved. I want to give you the opportunity to be delivered. I want to give you the opportunity to, to <clears throat> rededicate your life to Christ, if that's your desire. And therefore, you can take communion freely, openly. Why? Because now, you come back to the right relationship 
with God. I'm going to ask the leaders to come if they would and uncover the sacraments. Glory to God. And those of you listening to us, get your juice and get your crackers. This year we do it once a month, but the Bible says as often as you do this, you do so in remembrance of me. We doing it in remembrance of him. Amen. Mm -hmm. Doing it in remembrance of him. Y'all been waiting to uncover that table. <clears throat> in 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter, the Bible says, when he had given thanks, he broke the bread and said, take, eat it, this is my body, which was broken for you. Do it in remembrance of me. After the same manner, he took the cup, and the cup was representation of his blood. The bread was representation of his body. His body was broken for us, y'all. Mm -hmm. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace is upon him. Just like we preach today, he wants us to keep it moving. Why? Because he's already done all the work. Mm -hmm. yes. Glory to God. He's done all the work. Y'all can go ahead and serve everybody. Amen. As they're preparing to serve us. We come to the table of the Lord. We're all welcome because God so loved the world. Sometimes people come to the table of the Lord and they say the only ones invited to the table are those that are part of the local church. And this is the reason why we take this opportunity now to give you the opportunity if you don't know the Lord as your personal Lord and Savior. If I need to rededicate my life. If I need to get back in right standing with God. This is your opportunity. God, I want to get back in right standing with you. I want to walk right before you. God, I want to come back into the relationship with you that you want to have with me. This is your opportunity. So if you're here today, just right where you're standing at now, in your own mind and in your own heart, you repeat these words after me. Lord God, Lord God I, have sinned, I have sinned and fallen short of your glory. Father God, I renounce sin and Satan, and I make you my Lord and Savior. Come into my heart. Save me. Renew me. Revive me, God. And make me your child again. I commit myself unto you and your will. Give me the strength to do your will. To walk up right before you. And to serve you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Those who are invited to the table of the Lord, who need the Lord, and so will, and so all are welcome. Everybody's welcome at the table of the Lord. But we know the, our own condition. And God wants us to address our condition when we come to the table. Inside of the package, we just, we just made a confession to the Lord. And inside of that salvation package is healing, deliverance, mm -hmm. prosperity, and everything and anything else we would need from the Lord. We come to the Lord now. And those of you that have your bread at home, on that night when Jesus was portrayed, he took the bread. And after he had prayed, Father God, in the name of Jesus, when we take this cracker, which is representation of your body, Father, we do now break it and we eat all of it. Amen. After Jesus had broke the bread, he lifted up the cup and he gave the same saying. He said, this is my blood in the new covenant, which was shed for your sins and for the sins of the world. He said, take ye all of it and drink it. And they did so. The Bible says after they did that, they went out into the Mount of Olives. They sung a song because they were rejoicing. Father God, in the name of Jesus, as we come before your throne of grace on today, Father God, I pray now, Father God, for the sick, the lost, the unsaved, Father God, the unchurched, Father God. I pray now that your spirit would encamp about them, Father God, and that you would save to the utmost, Father God. I pray for these that are under the sound of my voice now, Father God, that don't know you in the part of their sins, Father God, that they would come back into a right relationship with you, Father God, that you would prick their very hearts, Father God, and bring them back into the fold. Father, this is our prayer in Jesus' name. Now, as they said in Jude, the 24th chapter, now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior.
be majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. Amen and amen. We are dismissed. Hallelujah.